I know. I really, really suck at timing when it comes to posting videos. Like this album came out almost a week ago and I made it a couple days after it came out. I suck. I know. All right, people have already like, they're probably already done watching reaction videos or review videos on this album, but I suck. Hey, it's Marshmallow back with a new video. Eminem dropped another album randomly. It came out January 17th. So thank you, Eminem. Thank you, because I had a really rough couple of weeks and this just totally made it better. It's like he knew. <laughs> I mean, I'm still like enjoying Kamikaze completely. But to have another album to enjoy is like, oh yeah. If y'all have been watching my channel or know me in real life, y'all know I am a stan. I am a huge Eminem fan. I've been listening to it nonstop, like all day at work today. That's all I was listening to. And I know I'm not the best at album reviews, but if I am a huge, genuine fan of someone, then I I want to talk about their albums, you know, whether I like them or not. So that's why I'm doing it. I get it. I'm not the best at it, but it's just something I enjoy. So this album is called Music To Be Murdered By, and I was like, oh shit. I'm not gonna lie. I saw a Facebook post, one of my friends, her opinions on his new music video, Darkness, and I was like, I never heard that song. What? So I checked it out, and then I saw that this album dropped and I was like, bitch, bitch. Honestly, I like darkness, don't get me wrong. But the video made me nervous, the end of it. Like I thought it was gonna be another revival. Once I get to the song, I'll talk a little bit more about that. There's 20 tracks on the album. Before I go track by track, to the people that are like, oh my God, Eminem is just old. He just needs to stop. Shut up. Yeah, he's 47. That's not old though, for one. Two, there are artists out there that are much, much older than him that are still touring. Since when has there been an age limit on doing what you love? Once you're in your 40s, you're not allowed to do what you love, enjoy, or what you're good at. Does that make sense? No. Some of these people make it sound like he's like 90 years old in a nursing home asking his nurse to take him to the studio. Video. He's 47. He's not dying. He's not 90. Like, oh God. Okay, so when you hit 40, you're done. You better not ever pick up anything that you enjoy ever again. You better just sit at home and do nothing. I get it. Kids these days listen to shitty rap music and don't understand bars, don't understand, you know, what real good like music and rap is. But come on. Duh! 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 Anyways, not too long ago, read that Eminem was talking about retirement again. And then this album dropped. I'm still reading that apparently it's a thing. But he's been saying that since like 2003, 2004. Encore days, he's been talking about retiring. I I hope it's not really a thing because come on dude you still got it when you want it you got it you know what I mean I don't know anyways so let's go track by track track number one is premonition and it's an intro it's I'm talking and then there's a chick screaming and then I'm shoveling and then the beat drops and some like lady sings <laughs> that was horrible then Eminem starts rapping about kamikaze and revival and basically just introducing the album Obviously, it's an intro, but track number two is Unaccommodating featuring Young M.A. I was kind of surprised to see her on the album because didn't he kind of throw some shade at her in the ringer? There was a part where he goes, ooh, she has a song called ooh, and does that the whole like the whole song. So I was a little bit surprised. I'm not a fan of her, okay? I low-key like that ooh song. Other than that, I, she's just like any other rapper. Honestly, her verse on this song was just kind of boring to me. I wasn't like, ooh yeah. Like it just, I don't know. No offense, but it just doesn't seem like it belongs on this song. I mean, good for her for getting on an Eminem track. Cause that's a big deal, honestly. But I just, eh just kind of mediocre to me. Eminem comes in at a minute 18 and of course he f 
kills it. People got really butthurt about this line, but I'm contemplating yelling bombs away on the game like I'm outside of an Ariana Grande concert waiting. Are you serious? Like, I get he's joking about bombing or shooting that happened, you know, at her concert. Have you not listened to anything else that he has put out in the past? Like, listen to the entire Marshall Mathers LP album. He has said much worse shit than that. Like, if y'all been living under a rock, Eminem has always said crazy shit. Track number three is You Gon' Learn, featuring Royce to 5'9 and White Gold. Now, I don't know who White Gold is. He did the chorus. It was all right. It was kind of cool. But I love Royce. I love him. Like, I was obsessed with Bad Meets Evil. Whew, I listened to that album like crazy. And once again, Eminem kills it. I like the song, but it's just not super hype. But it's still good. Track four is Alfred, which is an interlude. And let me tell you, I don't like this Alfred dude. That voice is creepy. <laughs> Track number five is Those Kind of Nights featuring Ed Sheeran. Holy shit, how many songs with Ed Sheeran now? River, Remember the Name with 50 Cent, which is a dope song. Oh, and then this one. I guess only three, but still, <laughs> I was surprised to see him on another track. But they must be really good friends or something. I'm just saying. He brings up, this beat reminds me of the D12 days and talks about bizarre. Basically just a funny song about chicks, sex, and drugs. Jokes about lean a lot. I'm not a super huge Ed Sheeran fan. Like, I'm not like, oh my god, I gotta go see him in concert, my ginger. <laughs> I'm not like that. No shade to anyone who is. Because that dude can sing. He is a really good singer. But I wasn't too impressed with his verse on this song. Like, I like the song. I do something about Ed's chorus just kind of... I think, honestly, the way he says nights. It sounds like a 13 year old boy who had like a voice crack. That's what it sounds like to me. And I'm like, why did you sing it like that, dude? I can't even do it. Nights. Other than that, love the song. It's great. Track number six is In Too Deep. I am obsessed with this song. Swear to God, he wrote that song about Chris and I, our relationship before we started dating. You know what I mean? Like this part. I mean the whole song, but this part like really stood out. Can't tell if I'm cheating on her with you or cheating on you with her, but really nobody's fault. Can't help who you love. Hope they don't overhear us talk because we both are getting sloppy. Probably subconsciously part of me's hoping we get caught because I'm not happy here with her. Rather have you, rather have me too. Facts. F just, yeah. Oh, uh, it's just crazy. I'm obsessed with it. It's a great song anyways, but I relate to it, so. I really love it. Track number seven is Godzilla featuring Juice World. Obsessed with this song. Rest in peace, Juice World. When he died, everyone was talking about it, but I never like listened to his stuff. I really like his voice and his parts in this song. Fits so good. I'm gonna have to check out the rest of his stuff. It's such a shame that he died, like in general, but for his career, like I said, with young ma like this that's huge to be on an eminem song his career would have blew up even more he passed and that's so sad the beat is sick i love it eminem's part holy shit did he kill it oh my god i'm obsessed with it the whole song is crazy but from three minutes on I swear to God, he beat that insane rap god verse. I was just like, how does he do that? <laughs> I can't stop listening to it, it's so good. Track number eight is Darkness. The first song I heard from this album, he has a video out for it. Love the song, I love the video. <sighs> I like the chorus, like I like how he sings in it. I can also relate because of my depression and then my past with addiction. The song and the video turns into being about the Vegas shooting, which was so tragic and so scary, overall heartbreaking. But at the end, he put a vote and then something about gun control. And I get it, I get it. But that's when I was like, oh no, don't be another revival. Please don't be another revival. I loved revival when it first came out. And I like some of the songs still. It was just way too political for me. I don't care about politics. When Eminem brought out Mosh back in the day, loved it. But he left it at that, you know what I mean, for the most part. But Revival was all about it and I couldn't deal with it. So I was really nervous about this album, but it was just that. Pretty sure he learned that you can't just draw a line in the sand and save. Anyways, I love that song, love the video. 
Track number nine is called Leaving Heaven featuring Skylar Grey. This song is dark as f Part of it is about his dad, who was a piece of shit deadbeat. He actually passed away not too long ago. Part of the song, holding my baby pictures up like you're proud of me, bitch. Rest in peace, sucker. See you in hell. Oh damn. But he has a right to be pissed. I was not expecting that. He talked about his dad many songs in the past, but that was something different. Maybe it was just because he died. I don't know, but I get it. Luckily, I have a good relationship with my dad now. Anyways, I've said this in my other Eminem videos, but I'm not a Sky Tyler Gray fan. I liked her in I Need a Doctor, but then all the other songs she's been in wasn't into. Surprisingly though, I really liked her in this song. I really love this song overall. I'm just surprised. I mean, here's Skylar Gray. I'm surprised Rihanna's not on a track. Oh, you know, he must have replaced Rihanna with Ed Sheeran. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Kind of. Track 10 is called Ya yeah, Ya, yeah, featuring Royce to 59 again. Black Thought, Q Tip, and Denon. I'm probably not saying that correctly. They're, I'm assuming, from Slaughterhouse, because in the chorus they say, Ya yeah, Ya, yeah, I'm Slaughterhouse. It makes sense. I'm not a fan of tons of like features on one track. Whoever is singing Ya yeah, Ya yeah, sounds like Buster Rhymes. And then the guy, like right after that, who has like a ton of auto tune, I like his voice. Even though I don't like a ton of features on one track, I actually like this song a lot. You know, in Unaccommodating, Eminem says, the beef between him and MGK, of course it's done. In this track, he says, me in this game, we got married already. Had the prenup ready on her, should have seen her belly. She was barely three months pregnant. Bitch had it, gave me a baby, we named it Machine Gun Kelly. <laughs> I die. <laughs> I mean, it could be a compliment though, if you think about it. Now I'm just gonna wait for Machine Gun Kelly to put out a song about Eminem again. Track 11 is Stepdad. It's an intro and it's a kid getting beat by a stepdad. <laughs> Cute. Track 12 is called Stepdad. Funny yet dark. Like a my mom vibe about his piece of shit abusive stepdad. How he hates him and wants to kill him as a child. It's not like Eminem rapping about it now. It's his young self, how he felt about the situation. I really, really like it. It's storytelling in a song, which I love because he used to do that a lot back in the day, like in the Slim Shady LP. Even though I love this song and it's funny, but it's sad because he went through a lot as a kid. And it's weird how back in the day he always made songs about his mom and now he's not like after headlights apologizing for all that now he's making songs about people that not only treated him like shit but also treated his mom like shit so it's it's crazy to see the turnaround track number 13 is marsh i love it at first i didn't like chorus I was like, that is just weird, but I like it. He's saying he's an alien, basically he's extraterrestrial and he's making himself sound like an alien. So I think it's really cool. The Beavis and Butt headline, I laugh every time I hear it. Track 14 is called Never Love Again. At first, I thought it was another song about Kim. Now I don't care, but <laughs> funny story. Back in the day, crazy obsessed with Eminem to the point where my bedroom went from having like all Backstreet Boys posters to having all Eminem posters. Naturally, I hated Kim, like from the bottom of my heart. Still don't like her, but I'm an adult now. I'm not like, oh my God, she took my man. But at 12 years old, I was. I remember on my 13th birthday, I got Encore. It just came out. I got it for my 13th birthday, I was so excited. I remember my cousin was there and was like, hey, just so you know, Crazy in Love and Love You More are songs to Kim. Don't get mad. <laughs> it's so funny to think back now. If my 12, 13 year old self heard this song, I would automatically be pissed thinking it's a Kim song until the end. Done with you pouring out the pill bottle. So now, listening to it, knowing he was talking about his addiction, I relate to it so much. Cause like I've said many times before, I am a recovering addict. It's so f***ing true. He does a great job of explaining it. He tricked me though. I thought it was another Kim song. Glad it's not. But he did the same thing in 25 to Life. I love that. And that's another reason why I really love Eminem and just respect him and love his music. Not just cause I've been listening to him since what, I was like seven years old because he is a recovering addict. Relate to him with it. Prefer listening to an artist that has gone through the struggle and has gotten clean rather than listening to someone who 
glamorizes partying and drugs and all that. I don't like that. I don't find music appealing when it's like that. I do still like some artists and some songs that are about drugs and drinking and stuff, but for the most part, I don't like it. It gives me anxiety and it makes me want to use again and party. So I respect him and I'm a lot for that. And I'm it's so awesome to know he's what, like 11 or 12 years clean now? Like that's awesome. Track number 15 is called Little Engine. Again, I love it. The chorus especially. Oh, he's making that vrin vrin. He's just, ugh, so... Uh, what was that, Marcy? Just, ugh, Oh, yeah, 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 I get what you're saying. <laughs> Have an the ass. bars. I just love him. What I really like about Little Engine, kind of a hype song, and then the beat drops and goes into the next track, Lock It Up featuring Anderson Pock. I love how it changes over. It just sounds so good. So I didn't know who Anderson Pock was until I heard Fat Joe's song with Eminem and Mary J called Lord Above. Eminem has a rhyme about Anderson Pock. So I'm like, oh good, now I know who he is. He kind of sounds like Kendrick Lamar a little bit. Yeah, I just love his voice. I love how he says, reach back reach back. I can't even do it. Yeah, I like his voice. Yeah, I'm gonna have to check out more of his stuff. I love when Eminem has like, lines that make me go, oh shit. The one line about stillborn abortion, it made me go, ooh. It's just good. He still to this day makes me, oh shit. Track 17 is called Farewell. I couldn't tell if it was about a song about a chick or addiction or his rap career, because at the end he says addiction is hell with facts. He's definitely saying farewell to someone or something. I didn't like the chorus at first. There was just something about it. I like when he sings. I mean, we all know he's not like this crazy good singer, but he's been singing for a long time. I never mind it, but there was something about the chorus I didn't really like, but now I like it. I had, it took me a few listens, but I like it. Track 8 is called No Regrets featuring Don Tolliver. Obviously Eminem's just saying no regrets. He's talking about him mentioning Tyler the Creator and people mentioning his kids to fire him up. Talks about how people want the worst for him. They wanna see him overdose. They wanna see him do bad, you know, fall on his face. I really genuinely love this song, but I do not like this Don guy. I d there's just something about him. Like, I hate the chorus of the song. Once again, I feel like it just doesn't, it doesn't fit. Someone else should have done the song. I don't know, I don't know who he is, but I don't really like him. It's definitely not my favorite song on the album. I love it, but it's definitely not one of my favorite songs on the album, just cause I just don't like that guy. Mm. Track 19 is called I Will, featuring King Crooked, Royce to 59, and Joel Ortiz. Holy shit, three songs with Royce on one album. Like, we get it. You and Royce are a great team. Just put out another Bad Meets Evil album, please. <laughs> well, he said in the song he was gonna murder this beat, and he did. It was. It's just a really good song. He's king, no one can beat him. And track 20 is Alfred, which is the outro, and once again, don't like it, it's creepy. Like, that's the shit I hear in my nightmares. <laughs> I'm not kidding. So, I'm gonna be honest, I wasn't 100% on this album when I first listened to it, but I have been listening to it all weekend, all day at work today, and I am obsessed with it. I think I like Kamikaze a little bit more, but it's a hell of a lot better than Revival, in my opinion. It's just a good album. I just don't like some of the features. I don't know how to rate this. At a 10, I would give it an eight and a half. But I love Eminem. I respect everything he does. I will always support him. Whether I agree with him on stuff or not. Whether, you know, with Revival, I loved it at first and then I didn't like it, but I still listen to it because I, I support him, you know? One more thing. <laughs> I am so, so, so glad he is straight away from working with Rick Rubin because his music was so kind of just mm, not raw and not him, you know? Glad that he's straight away from making songs like Berserk and uh, Remind Me. Songs where he would take like old rock songs or whatever and make them into a rap song, but they were like super corny. I might like them at first, but then I'm like, ugh, this is so annoying and corny. No offense, Rick Rubin. I gotta be honest. I need to change my rating. I originally gave it an eight and a half out of 10, but I gotta change it because I was thinking I gave Kamikaze a 10 out of 10. I gave Revival a 10 out of 10. Now I changed my mind about Revival after the fact, but I still love Kamikaze, 
but even when I rated it 10 out of 10, there were songs I didn't like. And I still don't like, like normal, nice guy and bad guy. I just wasn't into them. Now the reason why I wanna change my rating for this is because I actually like every song on this album. I'm not a fan of that Don Tolliver, but I like the song. So I gave Kamikaze a 10 out of 10 when I didn't like three of the songs. How is that fair? That's not fair. That's not fair. So I gotta be a stan. Genuinely rate it a 10 out of 10. Or at least a 9 out of 10. I was a little blind for Revival, but I should have gave Kamikaze an 8.5 out of 10 and gave this a 10 out of 10. Oh well. I feel like I kind of rambled with that, but <laughs> Once again, I know I'm not the best album reviewer. Those are just my opinions. Let me know your opinions on the album below and let me know your opinions on his retirement. Do you think he's actually gonna retire from music or not? Nah? I don't think he will. I don't know. If I'm wrong, I'm going to cry. I need to see him live before I die. I need to see him in concert, I'm just saying. Let me know how you feel about the album and this video. Please subscribe to my channel. It would mean the whole entire world to me. Follow me on social media, bam. I always follow back. And I'm out like a bone in sweatpants and I will see you on the flip side, bye.